Welcome back and congratulations for surviving over half of this terrible year. But you've also survived one of the most cataclysmic events in cosmology, almost as big as the Big Bang itself. Last May, two black holes collided, producing the Big Thump. So what exactly happened and what did they see? Scientists discovered a signal from seven billion years ago where they think two black holes collided. Alan Weinstein of Caltech said it was the biggest bang ever witnessed by humanity since the original Big Bang. And this momentous event that completely passed us all by was detected here at the Virgo and LIGO Gravitational Wave Observatories. One's in North America and one's in Italy. What exactly are they and how do they work? Well, there were experiments set up to actually confirm and detect Einstein's theory of gravity. The theory goes that mass affects space-time. And if mass does something weird like crashes into each other, the possibility of gravity waves exist. So these two big gravity wave detectors were built. And how they work is like this. There's two extremely long arms with lights shining down to a mirror at each end, but it's really special light. The light, if you can imagine it as a sine wave, is out of phase. So one arm has peaks going like this and the other arm has peaks going like that. So they cancel each other out when they hit the mirrors and bounce back, unless the two light beams and mirrors were affected by a gravity wave. And then the detector back at the laboratory would see a light around the edge as it was messed around by this enormous wave passing through Earth. And they've spotted a few. It took a while before they actually got a positive result. But what happened on May 2019 was momentous. This is a graphic simulation of what they think happened. Two black holes, and we'll get on to what exactly a black hole is and why these ones were very odd, collided and produced a wave of gravity that eventually, seven billion years later, hit the senses in both North America and Italy and produced a result. And between the two detectors, they could work out where this event occurred. And it wasn't in our galaxy, it was in a distant, distant galaxy, over seven billion light years away. So it's taken a long time to get here. I mean, that's one of the earliest signals from, you know, the birth of our universe. It's way back in time. But because they could pinpoint approximately where it came from, optical and infrared telescopes all around the world started looking to see if there was any optical evidence of this black hole collision. 
dropping their schedules, which had been worked out years in advance, they turned massive telescopes all over the world to this distant galaxy and... Yes, they found a new blob of light, optical wavelength that was produced by these two black holes colliding. So what exactly is a black hole? We hear about them in the movies, but it's just a gravitational sink where they think particles have collapsed in on itself to such an extent that the gravity is so intense that it pulls other stuff in. I mean, everything, you know, it will rip atomic matter apart and it's so intense that not even light will escape. Although Stephen Hawking thinks that around the edge, as particles are being sucked in and ripped apart, there will be a glow, Hawking radiation, and that turns out to be the case. But black holes are only formed by a very special type of collapsing star. Lots of things happen when a star ages and starts under its own gravitational weight compressing down to a smaller size. It can either get to a point where it just can't hold itself together and explodes, that's a supernova, or it can become smaller and smaller and smaller and then stop. And that's a neutron star and there's lots of those and they're extremely bright, extremely dense, weird physics going on. Probably the star is about the size of a large city, you know, after being enormous. But it just stays there as this weird bunch of compressed neutrons and it gives out intense radiation as it, some of them rotate. But there's just a few cases where the collapse continues or forms a black hole. And I know everybody out there is going to say, this is all wrong. It's an electromagnetic universe and it's all Tesla's theory. Well, yeah, sure. Look, people. The point about science is that it's just speculation. Based on observation, these are the best theories that we've got. And you would be right to say that all I'm doing is repeating the accepted science of today. But the accepted science of today is wrong and will change. So stick with me and enjoy the roller coaster ride of what is contemporary science. And sure, it will be wrong, it will change. Scientists thought there was a maximum size of stars that would collapse into a black hole. Too big, it'll do something else. Too small, it just won't happen. The two gravitational wave detectors, by looking at the interference pattern of like throwing a brick into your bath, could work out the size of the two black holes. And they're really weird. One was slightly larger and one was quite small as they hit and made this distinctive wave pattern that they picked up. In the past, it's been possible to detect tiny black holes all over the place and then these really weird ones that are called super massive black holes, which seem to be at the center of almost every galaxy. It's obviously part of the galaxy's formation that's not yet fully explained. But these medium-sized, and one of the scientists have called them Laurel and Hardy, which is just fantastic. I love how scientists are funny. But the Laurel and the Hardy black holes, when they collided, were of such an odd size that it blows the field wide open for people like you to get involved in science and work out a more accurate picture of what's really going on. And that's the joy of science, the new discoveries, how it can reinvent itself when new data comes in and we know we've got it wrong. And because we've looked, we've discovered that the truth is out there.